Let's start with a real story. Republic of Teva, city of Kizil. A 62-year-old woman has high blood pressure. She calls an ambulance. In the hospital, for some reason, they put her in a urological department. There, she burns her foot on a literally red-hot battery. Doctors cannot cope with the consequences of the burn and amputate her leg. And somewhere between all this, they also infect a woman with a coronavirus, from which, as a result, she dies. In all this sequence of mistakes and negligence, there was not a single qualified doctor who would stop it. Although, what else to expect from the Russian healthcare system, where such videos regularly pop up? Where is your bed? Go away, go to your bed. If you cannot walk, why the hell are you walking, you bastard? Of course, such blood and cases are rare, but much more common than in any other neighbor of Russia. And this reflects the systematic problems in the healthcare of Russian Federation. For example, according to the Medusa survey, every second Russian medical worker knows colleagues with the fake qualification documents. That is, there is simply no real control over the qualify of the work of doctors and indeed over the right to treat people in Russia. And instead of solving existing problems, the state creates new ones for medicine. So the Ministry of Industry and Trade wants to ban the purchase of imported ventilators. Allegedly, domestic ventilators are in no way inferior in quality to foreign ones, and this initiative will support a local manufacturer. Here is what the Russian doctors think about it. If I do not live in Moscow but far away from a big city, then I would not risk being alone with a domestic device. Natalia Sava, candidate of medical sciences, palliative care physician in a commentary to Medusa. This is a completely insane initiative that does not solve any problems and does not improve the conditions for Russian equipment manufacturers. It is not clear how they can start producing something without an accompanying clinical and scientific base. Vadim Sizov, anesthesiologist, resuscitator, intensive care physician, in a commentary to Medusa. In such situation, political ambitions are put ahead of real benefits. For the Putin's regime, this is a classic model of behavior. In general, all the so-called import substitution for the evil of enemies only leads to a decrease in the quality of life of Russians. For example, the Minister of Health reported that 70% of medicines in Russia are allegedly domestically produced. In fact, they are produced from imported raw materials. But the final product is of poorer quality and is from 40 to 100% more expensive than foreign counterparts. Another example of how the regime ruins medicine is the legalization of anti-scientific and even harmful practices. In a number of regions, Krasnodar, Chechnya and others, folk medicine was legally equated with evidence. For example, cancer is offered to be treated with smoke from dried herbs. And in June, the Russian Ministry of Health issued an official order to treat homosexuality, despite the fact that world medical community came to the conclusion back in the 90s year, homosexuality is not a disease. Conversion therapy, according to the standards set by the UN, is equated with ill treatment and torture, and in a certain limiting expression it can, in practice it is established, that it leads at least to the occurrence of mental disorders, for example depression, and in extreme terms to suicide, to suicide attempts or to actually committing suicide. And while Moscow invents gays as enemies for citizens, the real danger are completely ignored. In Russia, there is literally HIV epidemic. According to official statistics, up to one and a half million citizens are infected. According to the last UN data, in 2021, Russia was fifth in the world in terms of number of new infections. Since the beginning of this year, an increase in the incidence of tuberculosis, syphilis and acute hepatitis has been recorded. It would seem that in such a situation it is necessary to save people and urgently increase healthcare costs. But in June it became known that across the country funding for medicine was cut by 10%. 
and also that Russia could continue its criminal war against Ukraine. According to experts, over the past 30 years, the Russian government has not set the task of actually developing health care. Moscow systematically underfunded medicine because they needed money for the oligarchs, for yachts, for abroad, and so, in fact, the whole country was plundered. Well, plus a policy that allows the poorer the people, the more don't trout. The easier it is to manage and easier it is, for example, to send them to war in Ukraine. That is, it was Putin's systemic policy. Today, the chances of getting normal treatment for an ordinary Russian are becoming less and less. During the 20 year of his rule, the Putin's regime has plundered the entire healthcare system. And with the start of a full-scale war against Ukraine, the already decadent Russian medicine began to serve, first of all, the needs of the army. According to British intelligence, Russian hospitals are overwhelmed with 400 wounded arriving every day. Danilo Kobza for the UATV.